Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise on the banks of Buckeye Creek above Bridgeport, California. Somehow we have made it to Thursday morning, July 28th, 2016. So this is your old doomsday hermit for his second installment. I don't know what you call this. Uh, it's not a rant. I'm not even sure this is a whine. Uh, this is just a, a ramble as each Thursday as I clock off the weeks here in a uh, doomsday campsite. I'm just going to record, I don't know, just what's going through my twisted, tangled brain for anybody who wants to uh, sit around and listen. I have no idea where this rant is going. So to pick up from last week's rant on Thursday, I was, I was talking about, uh, among other things, about Michael Rupert. About Michael Rupert and coming to California finally to kill himself. How he, he, first he went to Colorado, and I mentioned how he told this vice reporter who asked him, why did you come here to Creston, Colorado? He said he came there to die, and then, but he actually ended up going to California, to Sonoma County, California, is where he actually uh, wound up in some CDS trailer in Sonoma County blowing his brains out. So I was talking about that but not then the very next day on Friday I decided it was time to uh, find a novel, pull a novel out of the box uh, that I had, I, what I did at the Point Arena California book sale, right at the closing of the sale, they just were selling bags of books for five dollars. So in the in literally as they were boxing up the books, I was in there just, just yanking novels willy-nilly off the shelf of the Point Arena California Library. Uh, Point Arena is actually California's smallest incorporated town on the Mendocino County coast. One of the books I grabbed, stuffed in this $5 bag of books that I had never heard of by writers I had never heard of, and that I reached in and pulled out of, the, uh, of this box of novels, was this book by a fellow I have never heard of named Dennis Johnson. Dennis Johnson. And this is his novel, I'm not even sure what year it's from, I don't have my reading glasses on, called Already Dead. Already Dead, a California Gothic. Good Lord does the universe have a sick, twisted sense of humor. I haven't finished the book, so I'm going to wait till I finish. I will be coming back at you on Sunday with a reading from Already Dead uh, by Dennis Johnson. But I just want to talk about this book because it's, I mean, it, it is, it, it is beyond uncanny. You've heard this all this this trite saying now when the student is ready the teacher will appear and so on Thursday night I'm talking about coming here to California that the universe for whatever reason has decided to put me right here in California absolutely isolated and alone at the end of this dirt road, basically 
as Michael Rupert said, I have come here to die. And uh, what that means, and uh, what does it mean when you have come somewhere to die? Uh, now, sometimes it means, in Michael Rupert's case at least, it means you come somewhere to put a 45 caliber uh, handgun in your mouth and pull the trigger to blow off the back of your head. That, of course, is one definition of, of coming to California to die. Uh, but as already dead, it explains in, in, uh, in its sick, twisted, hilarious uh, manner, I would call already dead kind of like an existential comedy. Uh, it's kind of like Nietzsche meets uh, Bill Hicks. If, 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 if Frederick Nietzsche and Bill Hicks had a bastard love child, it would be Dennis Johnson. Uh, and so what he explores, obviously, in Already Dead is just this this, this whole fuzzy line between life and death. And to understand death, I guess you have to understand life. Where does one, where, where does one end and where does one begin? Uh, this concept of already dead. Uh, I, I, you know, and this book goes through every possible uh, combination. I mean, it goes through suicide, homicide, uh, death by long lingering diseases, uh, like every one of, of his whacked out, just completely uh, whacked out, spiritually adrift, lost souls just migrating to California, in this case the coast of Mendocino County, uh, which is why the Point Arena Library probably had this book, uh, and just by, by examining these different characters, looking, looking at death and dying, and, and what does it mean to to die, to kill oneself, to kill another person? Uh, that there's a hell of a lot more definitions than just because. You're, you're still, you know, breathing, that your heart is beating, you're breathing, you're eating, and you're pissing and shitting. Uh, that in no way guarantees that you are alive. And, and he's not talking about what I would call, what I, of course, I call the clueless morons. Some, a lot of people call him just the walking dead or the zombies. He just refers to the 99.9% .9 of the public who would have no interest in this book on it. He just calls them sheep. And he's not talking, it's just understood that the vast majority uh, of people on the planet are already dead. That their lives are just so hopeless that they're already dead. So he's not really talking about those guys. He understands that those clueless moron zombies are never going to pick up his book. And if they did, uh, they, they would get about one paragraph into it and drop it like a hot potato. This book is for 
the, uh, the, the people on a, on a spiritual quest and, and looking at the existential both horror and sick, twisted, black comedy uh, of human existence. Just the people examining their lives and, and trying to figure out what it means to die and uh, how, as I was talking about, and I'm sure Michael Rupert understood, at least on some level, that in, in order to be reborn spiritually, you have to die. Uh, Dennis Johnson, he actually briefly mentions this spiritual uh, path from some sort of Japanese spiritual path, can't remember which one it was, that the spiritual warrior on, on this path, he understands that, that in order to begin the spiritual path to become a spiritual warrior, you have to be already dead. That you need to kill yourself in order to begin the path to finding out your true spiritual nature. Now, I'm sure on one level, what Don Juan would call uh, the same thing is, is silencing the internal dialogue uh, about you've got to kill, some people would use the term ego, that you need to kill your ego, this little petty tyrant uh, the, the, who won't let loose of your brain with this internal dialogue, this yammering, this constant yammering. I have been a total failure despite reading the, uh, the entire Carlos Castaneda series three times through. I have been an absolute total failure at silencing the yammering inside my brain, just shutting it, just turning off the noise. Uh, it, it doesn't matter how far I get in, into nature, how, how completely far uh, I remove myself from the clueless morons, how I try to extricate myself from the matrix. My, my single biggest failure and, and on the spiritual path is my inability to kill myself, to shut down the goddamn noise in my head and, and this uh, in this video right here, whether you want to call this a rant or a whine, it, it is an absolutely classic example of my failure to kill myself, to shut this shut this, this noise in my brain down. Uh, I can't do it. Uh, I, I, I get totally stoned out of my head, I eat mushrooms, I drink ayahuasca, eat San Pedro cactus, and it, 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 some new voices come in. I, I, I get some new voices, but I'm just changing one set of voices for the other. Uh, what does it take? You know, I mean, it, it, I, I, I believe it's the, the Buddhist quest, certainly a major part of it, is to silence the brain. And uh, now, I, I'm not saying Dennis Johnson 
really gives any advice on how to do that, on how to become already dead. He just, he just by using these hilarious, sick, twisted uh, cast of characters that for some reason, as he mentions time again, that, that there's something about California that tends to attract people uh, either on a spiritual quest uh, or, or just crackpots, as, as most people would consider uh, Michael Rupert. Michael Rupert <laughs> uh, could easily have been one of the characters in, in Already Dead, a California Gothic. He, he would, uh, my guess is that Dennis Johnson uh, probably was very well aware of the work of Michael Rupert. Could be that one of his various characters. I, I'm sure yours truly uh, it could certainly be, uh, literally in this case, be, be a character in one of his books. How somehow how the universe has picked California a, as a mecca for these for these uh, lost soul spiritual wanderers uh, stumbling through through life ending up here uh, well in this book ending up uh, as far as you can go which is Point Arena, California, which is the farthest west point in the United States. It's as close as you're going to get to China or Japan without falling into the Pacific Ocean. Point Arena is also where the, uh, the San, An San Andreas Fault enters the ocean. It is, it is where the major fault line uh, that he talks about fault lines uh, the shifting of the plates the the cataclysm that California just sits on the edge of the abyss that part of this living uh, on the edge of the abyss maybe maybe brings it out uh, so anyway, I, I must uh, once again, hats off to the universe, literally, for putting this novel and this writer, Dennis Johnson, my new Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, anybody out there, uh, on any sort of, of, of spiritual path, uh, interested in, in just the whole concept of the blurred lines between life and death. Uh, and, and of course, any interest in suicide. And interestingly enough, guys, the, his characters are not really depressed. He doesn't talk, he never talks about depression. Now, loneliness is is certainly a uh, a recurring theme in this book how all of these oddball uh, cast of characters failing miserably uh, which he does not say is a bad thing uh, he, he doesn't sermonize in this book but he does let it know that the characters who have managed to detach uh, from civil society are obviously the ones that he uh, thinks of the ones who have spiritually evolved the most are the ones who have managed to become the most feral. Uh, so all of his characters are at some stage of becoming feral as they completely detach from, uh, from civilization. And of course, 
it never really explains that the vast majority of the characters, they just don't seem to have jobs. Just somehow uh, they've managed uh, not to have regular jobs that they're so, just somehow managed to exist in the most expensive area in the United States and somehow just do it w without working for a living. Now some of it, some of them do, uh, but I guess that's just a byproduct of, uh, of, of killing yourself and, and getting out of the matrix is, is becoming jobless. Uh, <laughs> that's an ingredient. And so I am off to continue killing myself. This is just an update and, you know, another thing on my, that's been heavily on my mind, I talked about this in a rant last fall, is this author, I wish I could remember his name, I was listening to Carrie Gross interviewing this guy. Uh, this author who had just died. I need to go find that rant so I can get his, uh, his name, first name was John. That helps you a lot, I'm sure. But what he was talking about uh, with this, this uh, interview with Terry Gross was not so much killing yourself, but killing your friends. He didn't use the word killing, like, Damn, I wish I could remember the verb that he used was, was that part of the path to your own evolution is what he was doing, at least what he was actively involved in during this time he had this interview with Terry Gross, is that he was basically what was the word? It wasn't killing, it wasn't editing, it wasn't deleting, it might have been excising or exorcising his friends. And what, what that process he was talking about, as I say, I discussed this already in a previous rant from last year about how, what, what he was doing is he was literally going through his Rolodex of friends and examining his friendships, his relationships with other people and, and asking himself, how is this person benefiting me? Uh, are they a are, are they energizing me or are they energy vampires, basically? And how it is so important, and, it, and it's not the easy thing to do, but as part of examining yourself, you need to examine the people that you associate with and whether they are holding you back and eating your energy, and he was just talking about how he was going through his list of friends and just crossing them off. And I have been noticing this on uh, this own pattern now. The vast majority of my lovable, clueless friends, I haven't actually actively crossed off my list. They've just fallen by the wayside. But I have now in the past two or three years, I have killed, well, I think I'm up to five friends that I have killed. Uh, I, have, I have examined the friendship and asked myself, what is this friendship doing for you or to you? to benefit and to harm you. You put, like anything else, you put it on a cost-benefit analysis. And if your friendships, your friendships are 
the cost of the friendship is outweighing the benefit of the friendship, it is time to kill your friends. That this is a, a just a brutal way of looking at it, but that's what, in, in, in essence, is just part. And so that's one thing I have been doing. Of course, it's easier and easier for me to do each year to, uh, to kill my friends because with each passing year, hell, with each passing day, I have fewer and fewer friends left to kill. But uh, so pretty soon I'm going to kill all my friends and then finally get down to who really needs to die and who needs to live on. And uh, it's all part of the process. But I do want to thank Dennis Johnson for writing and the universe for sending me at the absolute moment the student needed the teacher already did a California Gothic and uh, I mean this is one of these books that you hate to see coming to an end but uh, I will come back at you on Sunday with a reading from the book but right now the coffee has done its work the little my, my little friend the little dog is telling me it's time to head to the outhouse to kill to let go of a certain part of you it's time to say goodbye. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this Thursday's installment of your Doomsday Permit uh, effort to kill himself here in paradise in the end times. Be back at with you next week Unless, of course, it sounds like there's the hints that I might, as much as I don't want to admit it, have a job. Have a job. So, don't know if I'll be coming at you, if I'll be here next Thursday or not. We will let the universe decide. But for this Thursday installment of Doomsday Hermit Killing Himself, Bye, guys.